Jim, the World Bank is predicting that the global economy will come dangerously close to a recession this year due to weaker growth in all of the world's top economies, the U.S., Europe, and China. What can people expect for a year that will be teetering on the edge of recession? And the World Bank is not alone, Kelly, in making that pessimistic forecast. Uh, many other uh, forecasting groups like the International Monetary Fund and many of the major banks and forecasters here in Canada are also feeling very gloomy uh, about the year ahead. So uh, in a way, this is just uh, more opinion added to a consensus among economists that uh, 2023 will be a, a very weak year, uh, quite likely a recession in Canada and possibly a recession across the whole global economy, which almost never happens. Often you'll get a recession in one country or a few countries, but for the whole global economy to shrink uh, is a very negative sign. You mentioned a likely recession for Canada. What will that look like here? In Canada, uh, we're likely to see a, a stalling of growth and perhaps an actual economic contraction uh, over the next few months. Uh, this is the delayed impact of the big increases in interest rates, which the Bank of Canada imposed last year. And we may still see further rate increases from the Bank of Canada this year. Um, so uh, those, uh, those increases in interest rates have a delayed effect on consumer spending, on the construction sector, on business investment. Uh, so we're likely to see a, a downturn in uh, total economic output, a downturn in employment, higher unemployment and higher poverty, unfortunately, as a result. When the world economy is in this state, who gets hit the hardest? Well, people who can't really afford the day-to-day -day necessities of life uh, are the ones with the least to fall back on uh, when the economy slows down and unemployment starts to increase. You know, uh, in a way, everybody's, everybody's hit by a slowing economy, but uh, people who are well off or have a lot of savings, a lot of wealth that they can draw on, uh, tend to skate through a recession. Uh, but people who are already living close to the edge, uh, they had a low wage job or they you know, had uh, unaffordable housing. Uh, for those groups, um, any negative uh, trend in the economy is, is amplified uh, in terms of the social harm that it causes. We heard Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell say that the U.S. Central Bank needs to stay out of politics if it's to stabilize prices. Do you think this should be true for other economies around the world? Well, central banks make a big deal out of how they're supposedly independent uh, in making their judgments about where the economy is going and how high they should raise interest rates and uh, how hard they should try to clamp down on inflation. But uh, in practice, while central banks are unelected, that's clearly the case, they're not like a government that can be voted out of power, that doesn't really mean that they're neutral or unbiased. Uh, they talk very, very uh, often, uh, work very closely with financial markets and banks uh, and investors, uh, and they're trying to do what they think is best to stabilize uh, prices and stabilize the value of financial wealth. But uh, in reality, they pretend to be apolitical, but central banks definitely take sides on issues. And the fundamental issue they're taking sides on right now is it's more important to clamp down on inflation than it is to do anything else in the economy, including create jobs and try to support the incomes of uh, low-income households. So uh, like it or not, central banks are very political institutions. And having uh, Mr. Powell or any other central banker stand up and say, we're staying out of politics, we're just doing our little technical job here, uh, I think is quite misleading. Thank you so much for joining us, Jim Stanford. Kelly, my pleasure. Thank you.